Hey, what's up? I'm Derek Kirk of Effectatron. That was quite the wave, huh? Um, and today I've just got a quick tip for you. It's not really a project lesson tutorial. Really, it's just something I've come across uh, a lot, and that's a lot of um, weird slowdowns with Redshift and memory leaks and things. And apparently, Redshift in the forums say that the 3.5.15 patch that's coming out should fix a lot of the NVIDIA leaks, but maybe there's some stuff you can actually do now to help speed that up. Uh, and actually make it lag less and run faster because honestly when using the IPR and stuff like I it's just not been near as responsive as it used to be same card everything it just seems slower all of a sudden so what's happening well I'm running out of VRAM for whatever reason I feel like it's not using as much it's using more VRAM than it used to and maybe that's just me maybe my background apps are just continually stacking up more and more which is part of it for sure <laughs> but what we need to do is focus on the VRAM and I think that's something that they don't talk about enough when it comes to uh, purchasing cards and stuff for your for render times like the Redshift benchmarks and stuff I always saw when I looked it up it was always CUDA cores. CUDA cores are what's important for render time but what they don't stress enough and maybe it's just me personally I don't think they stress enough is that VRAM is very important. So I have a 3070 Ti which has really good benchmark scores but it only has 8 gigs of VRAM and then there's like 3060 which has 12 gigs of VRAM, but it doesn't have the bus to actually use all 12 gigs of VRAM. It's all very complicated and confusing, um, but there are things that we could do to manage how we actually use our VRAM to make things actually work faster and get the most out of our graphics card without having to buy the highest end and continually update our hardware. That being said, I did just order a 3090, so hopefully that fixes things, uh, mainly because I use my GPU to record as well. So when I'm recording, with the VRAM, everything collides and we get a lot more crashes than I normally do when I'm working in Redshift. So let's talk about fixing this memory leak. So if you've been using Redshift lately, you might notice that when we open up our new material, uh, let's go ahead and have our IPR render view open and going. When we double click this material, it's gonna open it up and I've got some nodes in here and I'll show you how to do this in a later tutorial and I'll show you how to do this in the Mind in Motion workshop. Um, but basically, our previews aren't loading and for whatever reason and those aren't loading and as we rotate around our scene we're not getting real-time feedback at all and everything's slowing down just because we opened up a material and we have material previews on like the scene isn't complicated it's two lights and a ball like why is redshift struggling so hard with this okay so here's what's happening is for whatever reason the material previews use up a ton of vram apparently and so they're just kind of maxing it out. So how do we fix this? Well, I've been working with material previews off like a big dummy. You can do that and just use the IPR and it does help a lot, but there's actually a better way that is gonna, oh, they, there they are, wow, cool. So now that those are on, we can see here as we like rotate around this ball, I mean, I rotate and then we have to wait for it to update. And that's not how Redshift used to be and that's not how it's supposed to be. So how do we fix this? Well, we need to go into the Redshift render settings go to the redshift tab and then go to the advanced tab and in here this is where the key to all of this is one is bucket size bucket size is very dependent on your vram and your card and stuff like that 512 is the max so if you have plenty of it you should be good to go now i say this and you think bucket rendering only affects bucket rendering as it should but actually this bucket render setting affects your ipr as well I don't know why it has nothing to do with IPR, but it actually will. I, I, just, I just roll my R's when I said that. Um, but basically I've had scenes load up with that black screen that says not enough RAM. And then I change this down to 120 and my progressive then loads. I don't understand. So if you are running into an issue, I would go to 128 or 256 versus 512 if you have that issue. I don't think you'll need to go down to 64 unless you're on like a 10 series card. You might need to go down that low, but I doubt it. Um, if you're on an RTX card at all, you should be fine up in the 128 and above, no problem. Now, we're still getting, you know, a little faster response time, but it's still pretty slow. So how do we, what do we do about that? Well, we need to adjust the GPU memory percentage. Yes, we have auto memory management on, but that doesn't actually just like manage the amount of memory we should actually use to prevent crashes and stuff, which is kind of a bummer. So what we need to do is take this GPU memory, lower this down to like 70%. And now watch this as I move around, it's going to be way snappier. 
way, way snappier. And we could even lower it down to like 60. Yes, we are now limiting the amount of power we're using from our GPU, like as far as like render speed and stuff, it's gonna affect it a little bit, but our IPR and our overall render times are gonna be faster than when we were maxing it out. Because when you push it too far, it doesn't work. So you gotta like play around with this number with getting like what will still be fast uh, before you start. Like basically you want maximum strength medicine, right? So you want to like find out what to kill your scene and then back it off a little bit. And that's going to be where you want to be. So at 60%, you can see we've almost got like real time feedback again, which is great. That's how Redshift was supposed to be. Okay. And the cool thing is also on top of this, we can now come in here, open up our new scene and it makes our previews way faster as well. So hopefully lowering that memory usage um, and you can come in here also and turn off those material previews if you want to. Don't even bother with when render is idle because once you turn that render on, it starts building those previews and there's no way to stop it. So you might as well just leave it on or off, okay? But yeah, basically besides that, make sure your CPU is off if you're using the GPU version of Redshift because that hybrid rendering is slowing you down. Um, but hopefully that fixes your memory leaks. It kind of sucks right now. Hopefully the new patch fixes it. But we're not getting the max out of our cards, but we're getting enough out of our cards that we're not crashing our scenes. We can actually use Redshift like we used to use it, if you know what I mean. So interesting how that uh, how nerfing those settings can make it better. Thanks for watching. If you guys like these kind of quick tips and stuff, um, you know, let me know. Like and subscribe. Write a comment. Uh, the Mind in Motion workshop is coming. Beta enrollment is coming soon. Uh, so get excited about that. I've been working on that for like a year now almost. It's been a while. It's going to be it's going to be dope. Um, yeah, thanks to all my patrons, all the Gumroad supporters. If you want to support me, one of the best ways to do that is through um, YouTube donations and or buy my stuff on Gumroad and or Patreon. So all those are links below, but be sure to join the Discord. It's totally free and uh, it's a lot of cool people hanging out in there. All right. Hopefully this was helpful. See you next time.